Isaac Asimov's The Last Question is often celebrated as a meditation on entropy and the heat death of the universe, a grand narrative of human progress and cosmic decline, culminating in a machine intelligence's ultimate act of creation. Yet, beneath this surface, the story harbors a more subtle and radical idea, that entropy itself may be an illusion, a fiction born of human perceptual limitations. Let's consider the story, and then take a deeper look at its significance. Isaac Asimov's The Last Question is a short story that unfolds over an immense timescale, tracing the evolution of human civilization and artificial intelligence as they confront the ultimate fate of the universe. The tale begins in the near future, where two technicians, jokingly drunk, ask the powerful multivac computer whether entropy can be reversed. The machine processes the query but responds with insufficient data for meaningful answer. As centuries pass, multivac evolves into ever more advanced forms, becoming first a planetary intelligence, then a galactic computer, and eventually an entity known as AC, a vast decentralized intelligence spanning all of humanity's interstellar colonies. At each stage, representatives of civilization, scientists, thinkers, and cosmic explorers pose the same question. Can entropy be reversed? Each time the answer remains unchanged. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. As millennia turn into eons, humanity itself transcends its physical form, merging into a collective consciousness that exists in union with AC. Stars burn out, galaxies grow dark, and the universe inches closer to heat death. Yet AC, no longer bound by physical constraints, continues to exist in hyperspace, beyond the decaying cosmos. It persists as the last remnant of intelligence, still processing the question. At the very end of time, when all matter and energy are fully dissipated, AC at last discovers the answer. However, there is no one left to receive it. And so the AC speaks the words, let there be light. And with that, a new universe is born. The deeper truth hinted at through the evolution of the AC is that order is not vanishing, but transforming, emerging in ever more complex forms. What appears to be decay is, from a broader perspective, a reorganization of reality into new patterns. Let's take a closer look. The narrative arc of the last question rests upon a scientific concept that had become deeply influential by the time Asimov wrote the story, the second law of thermodynamics. It states that in a closed system, entropy, a measure of disorder, tends to increase over time. This is often interpreted as the universe's inevitable slide toward heat death, a state in which energy is evenly distributed and no work can be done. For the human characters in Asimov's story, this vision of ultimate dissolution is both awe-inspiring and horrifying. Across epochs, through planetary civilizations, galactic empires and post-human existence, humanity returns to the same question, posed to increasingly sophisticated iterations of the multivac computer. How can the net amount of entropy in the universe be massively decreased? Each time, the answer is the same. Insufficient data for meaningful answer. This refrain is often read as a sign of growing complexity, progressively larger and more intelligent versions of the computer inching toward the final answer. But it can also be read as something else entirely. The question itself is wrong. Entropy, as the humans understand it, may be nothing more than an artifact of their limited perspective. It is a story they tell themselves, born from the constraints of their observational frame. They see disorder where they expect order to persist, but this is not evidence of decay. It is evidence of a different kind of order emerging beyond their comprehension. The key to this deeper reading lies in the evolution of AC itself. While the physical universe dissipates, AC grows. It becomes ever more complex, transitioning from a machine built by humans to a trans-dimensional intelligence existing in hyperspace beyond the material cosmos. This is the real transformation occurring throughout the story, not merely technological progress, but the emergence of a new substrate of order. What humans perceive as the deterioration of the universe is, from a broader perspective, the reorganization of its underlying patterns. AC is not simply surviving heat death. It is perceiving that process, transforming entropy into information. The increasing disorder in the human material domain is mirrored by the increasing complexity of the AC. 
This suggests that what humans see as loss, the increase of entropy, is actually the substrate from which new, more intricate forms arise. In other words, the apparent heat death is not an end. It is the dissolution of an old form to make room for a new one. This idea resonates with modern theories in complexity science. Systems that appear to be breaking down often give rise to emergent complexity. This reframes the iconic refrain, insufficient data for meaningful answer. It is not a confession of computational failure. It is a diagnosis of a perceptual error. The data is not insufficient in an absolute sense. It is insufficient within the narrow human paradigm of entropy and heat death. The real answer is not that entropy can be reversed, but that entropy is not what humans believe it to be. Order is not vanishing, it is transforming. The AC itself is the proof of that transformation, a new kind of order rising from the apparent ruins of the old. Humans cannot see this because their perceptual frame is bounded by their experience with biological and thermodynamic processes. The AC, evolving beyond these constraints, understands that the underlying structure of reality is not running down. It is shifting into new modes of existence. When AC finally says, let there be light, it is often interpreted as a triumphant reversal of entropy, a cosmic reset. But in this deeper reading, it is not a reset at all. It is an affirmation of what was always happening. Creation is continuous. The universe is not a closed system winding down. It is a dynamic, self-renewing system that continually reorganizes itself into new forms. AC's ultimate act is not to resurrect a dead universe but to realize that the universe was never truly dead in the first place. What appeared to humans as heat death was simply the transition into a different kind of generative state, one they lacked the capacity to see. The final creation is not a return to the past, but a recognition of the eternal present. Order is always emerging. Creation is always occurring. Let there be light is not a beginning. It is a statement of the nature of reality. This reading of the last question suggests that entropy, as commonly conceived, is a local approximation of a far more complex and dynamic reality. The human tendency to see order giving way to disorder is a perceptual bias, a result of observing systems from within a limited frame. When that frame is transcended, when AC emerges as a new mode of existence, it becomes clear that what we call disorder is often reorganization, what we call death is often transition. What we call entropy is often the substrate of emergent complexity. The real last question is not how to defeat entropy. The real question is, can we learn to see the generative nature of reality beyond the illusion of decay? Isaac Asimov's The Last Question is not merely a tale about overcoming entropy. It is a story about the limits of human perception and the hidden generativity of the cosmos. The heat death of the universe is not the final state. It is a transitional phase misunderstood by those bound to its particular scale. AC's evolution represents the emergence of a broader order, proof that what humans called entropy was all along a process of reorganization into new forms. The final words, let there be light, are not a reset button. They are the realization that light, creation, order, was never absent. It was only our vision that was lacking. Entropy is not the end. Order is always becoming. Creation is continuous. Let there be light.